What's he doing, bud? Painting. What's he painting? Well, first of all, hello everybody, friends and neighbors. Nikki and Kathy back with you today from Hills Mill Homestead, working on a little project. As you can see, you missed the fun part where I removed the, the floor that was in here. It was about gone, it was deteriorated. But if you'll notice on this I-beam, you see some screws. So the floor was screwed across there and then it was screwed across this one as well, this L channel. So all I had to do is take a Sawzall and just cut that out, two cuts, and then all of the floor just lifted out of here. But as you can see, it's rusty. It's, uh, this trailer's probably 15, 18 years old. So we're gonna bring it back to life and make it look new again. We got a pretty special project for this trailer. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep you informed as we go but we're gonna put an engine on the front of this trailer and then we're gonna put a grist mill on the back of it. And this is gonna be our mobile grist mill. So follow along with us on that and see the progress. But right now I'm getting it ready to go get a new floor to put on it. It's an 18 foot trailer. It's a little oddball different than your normal 16 foot. But uh, we're gonna put a new fresh coat of paint on it. It's a good farm implement paint. Should last for many years and hopefully gonna give the floor a lot longer life than what typically comes out of a factory. So that is what we're doing today. We found a nice shady spot. Beautiful late September day. This is perfect opportunity for a project like this. And look, I just noticed can you see the acorns on these white oak trees? Can you focus in on some of those limbs and just see how low they are? But that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna get a fresh coat on here. We're gonna put new lights on it, a new wiring harness, and a new coat of paint, put a floor in. Then I'll paint the rest of the trailer, and then it's gonna look a lot better than it does now. I took a scraper and I scraped every inch of this, and then I took a hose last night and pressure washed all of it and let it dry. So that would be a, a really good thing to do if you're gonna try to, to replace a floor, is you need to scrape off as much rust as you can before you repaint it. proper way to hold a paintbrush. You don't paint like this. You hold it, you hold a paintbrush like a pencil, three fingers. You can control that any way you want to and it's not hard on your wrist. You painters know that. You see our screws that are left in here on these two runs that were that had the wood actually bolted down. Here in just a little bit, I'm gonna have you take some vice grips and hold the top, and I'll take that sawzall and cut that off. Because we didn't want. Goodness, I just cut that wire all the pieces. You see that? Yeah, we've got to replace the wire and harness if we're going to replace the lights. That way we don't have any unexpected surprises when they don't work. So it's just a process. Take old lights out, put new ones in. 
Running you higher wiring harness. Get it all connected. Okay. Finish painting. Then I'm ready for wood forward. Where it's been repaired a few times, you might want to replace it. Just a little piece of advice. But another thing, you know, why would we want to go buy a new trailer when you can buy a used, nice, straight one and just redo it and then you still got a new trailer without having to pay a new trailer price? That's the... That's it. Yeah, see, this thing's had several repairs done to the roof for a period of time. I'll go back and put clips in all of these to keep these in it up out of the way. Because that's the main thing. If you ever have a dog that likes to chew on wire, yeah, they just love chewing on trader wire. For. Then I got to run my main line over here, and even though this trailer is DOT ready with one amber light up front for the side light, this trailer is so long that I'm going to add another amber light here on the end of it just to give it a little bit extra light. But 18 foot. And the plan is to take our mill off of this trailer. And we're going to mount it to the back of this trailer. We're working on a, a utility engine farm all that we're going to mount to the front of this trailer. And we're going to use it to operate the mill. And that way we have our mobile mill for grinding corn and mill, corn mill and all that. And so. If we want to go to a fair or a show, we'll just hook up and go. Maybe we could talk Deep South Homestead into having a big old fair, corn milling fair. Wouldn't that be something to have a um, a big hit and miss engine antique tractor and homestead show? Ooh. I don't know if there's enough ice in Mississippi to fill all the drinks.
You know, I've said many times that a clamp can replace a person's hands. So if you've got clamps, you can always do jobs by yourself rather than having help. So we're gonna see how this works. Take your little block. And you may have to attempt it a couple of times to get it exactly right. But cut the corners off where you've just got one flat spot on each side. And let me show you what we're gonna do with it. guys that's how it's done I hope you got to see our little trick how we put in our long trailer boards without ever having to cut this metal because that's very important when you cut that metal you're gonna change the integrity of that piece of iron and it's gonna make it weaker now you can go and have it welded back but that's just a lot of trouble so the little trick that we had should save you some time and it did a really well job uh, I don't think that uh, you could ask for a better job, especially on these sides where I planed the edge so it would match and stay flat. That's very important. And let me throw in another little tip for you. Now, me being a lumber guy and a sawmill guy, a lot of people don't know this, but let me share something with you. Every piece of lumber has the grain either straight or in some sort of a circle. And you always, whether you're putting it on a wall or whether you're putting it flat on a trailer floor, you always want to put the heart at the bottom. And the reason why is that tree is round. And if it's ever going to curl, it's going to curl inward. So if you put this upside down with the heart up, then I think it's actually got a little curl. You can see how it's going to curl. So whenever you're putting lumber down or whether you're putting it on a wall, you always put your heart down. And that way when you attach it, it can't curl up. It can only move down. But if you've got it attached, it cannot move. And here's another tip. Boy, we're full of tips today. Well, let me just tell you, I've been a carpenter all my life and in construction, and I've learned this over many years of time, especially with pressure-treated lumber. If you'll ask the experts, they'll tell you to put a pencil gap in between each board. Some people say just use a nail. Well, let me give you some advice. Pay no attention to them. These boards need to touch each other when you put them down. And the reason why is because they are green, they are wet, they are going to shrink. And in just a matter of a few weeks, you're going to see a gap in between those boards just like that. You want that gap so when it rains, the water won't sit on top of it. So don't gap in between your boards on pressure treated lumber. 
Now here's another tip. You might say, well, it sure is pretty and I want to stain it so it'll look good. When do I stain it? So here's a little tip for you. When, when to know when to stain pressure treated lumber. Just get you a cap full of water. Pour it on that lumber. And if that water is not absorbing into the lumber, that means that the lumber is green. So it's not ready to stain. So when you can pour a little water on a dry board, you'll see it absorb, that lumber will absorb it pretty quick. Then you know it's ready to stain. But that water will sit there all day and not absorb into that lumber. So that's just another little tip of how you know when to stain your lumber. So guys, I hope you learned a little something, especially about replacing a trailer floor. You know, in some situations, depending on the trailer, you could save thousands of dollars of replacing the floor and doing a new paint job rather than going and buying a new trailer. So I'm uh, glad you stayed with us. I know it's a little bit of a long video but I hope that it was worth it, and thank you for sharing your time with us. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and even share our videos. And our, our uh, electroculture antennas, you can purchase those at our website, hillsmill.com. And thank you once again for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.